John Doe in Tucson, Arizona. He asks, what is decarboxylation? Okay, great question. Decarboxylation, um, if you picture a molecule as a carbon chain, it's a bunch of different things stuck together. Decarboxylation is knocking the end off that carbon chain. And so it's literally releasing CO2 as it breaks off. If you, um, if you ever smoked hash and notice that it's bubbling as you're smoking it, you're actually watching it decarboxylate. And um, the, in terms of the you know, rubber hits the road, what does it do? It causes THCA or CBDA to convert to THC or CBD. And when the, in the case of THC, that's what makes it psychoactive. So when the plant's growing in the ground, you're not looking at THC, you're looking at THCA. And it's only once it's been exposed to heat that it decarboxylates and becomes THC. And that's the process of making it psychoactive. So it sometimes gets referred to as activating the medicine or turning the plant on. And I don't like that term particularly because there's, there's a lot of medical applications for the raw form of it. But if you're say making brownies and you want, you're just trying to get your friends as high as possible, you want to thoroughly decarboxylate it because if you say you don't expose it to quite enough heat for quite long enough, and it only decarboxylates say 10 or 20 percent then you know you've kind of wasted a lot of medicine there you could you know you that could have been you know four or five times more potent than it was just because you didn't monitor your temperatures closely enough now if you are going to say you're treating something like cancer and you're trying to ingest as many cannabinoids as possible as you know as high a dose as possible going with a non-decarboxylated or an only partially decarboxylated medicine makes a lot of sense. If you say only decarboxylated 5%, that means you could take say a thousand milligrams of cannabinoid acid and say a thousand milligrams of THCA or CBDA, but only get like 50 milligrams of THC, which is like a, you know, a tolerable dose that, you know, isn't going to leave you on your couch all week. And so that's, you know, that's it. It's one of those things that it really depends on your medical application for it, but it's, you know, it's, it's something that you want to very closely monitor in the process of processing the medicine. There's another thing to pay attention to. And so in the same way that when you expose THC to heat, it converts, or sorry, when you expose THCA to heat, it converts to THC. When you expose THC to heat, it converts to CBN. And CBN is a powerful sedative. And so, I, you know, I, if you've ever tried medicine that really made you go to sleep and, you know, it's just really hard to stay awake for it, then, you know, that often gets associated with an indica versus sativa. But very often when you actually a analyze it, it's not the, the, the di distinction between indica and sativa. It's that it's been decarboxylated so thoroughly that the THC started to convert to CBN. And once you get a, beyond a 70% decarboxylation, the THCA, there, sorry, the THC converts to CBN at a faster rate than the THCA converts to THC. So you actually start to see a fairly dramatic drop in THC beyond that point. So if, if that's what you're going for, if you're, you know, treating a sleep disorder or, you know, you're trying to help, have it help you fall asleep, it makes a lot of sense to, you know, try to make a bunch of CBN in there. Um, if that's not what you're going for, if you're trying to stay awake and just enjoy the experience of, you know, the THC, then you're not trying to push the limit of how much decarboxylation you can go. You're, you know, a 50% decarboxylation might be the sweet spot for you. And you want to experiment with that. And part of, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to get feedback in terms of what, what you're looking at with it without getting it tested. And so that brings us to the testing aspect of, the, of decarboxylation. Now, for a long time, the, the machine that was used to perform the analysis was called a GC or a gas chromatograph. And that uses heat in the process of testing it. it. It takes the plant material, exposes it to heat, and then analyzes the vapors that are released during combustion. So when that was the only machine that was being used to test it, we didn't really know about the cannabinoid acids. We didn't know about THCA because it was by the time the machine was testing it, it had already been exposed to heat. There's a, another machine that gets used now, and some labs are using it, others are still using gas chromatographs, but the other machine is called an HPLC, or a high pressure liquid chromatograph. And that one doesn't use heat. And that, so it, it allows you to test for the cannabinoid acids. And that makes a lot of sense if that, you know, if it's something you're trying to zero in on. There's a lot of medical applications where you don't want to decarboxylate it at all. And for that, you know, a, either a raw juice or a cold extract makes a lot of sense. And 
even even without exposing it to any heat, you still get some decarboxylation just through drying. So if you really want no decarboxylation, a raw juice makes a lot of sense, but even like a 2% decarboxylation or 5% still allows you to have a fairly tolerable dose of THC, but you know, a much higher dose of THCA. So that's a that's a long answer and it's more it gets even more complicated the more you dive into it. And, you know, we'll we'll cover different aspects of it in the process of, you know, teaching people how to make the different extracts, but in terms of a definition, that's decarboxylation. Awesome. Thank you.